Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. I've got three stories to share with you in this latest tepid jam. I'll be starting with this one from you today. Ripple CTO hints at Satoshi Nakamoto's identity and reason for enormous wealth untouched. And one of the things that I do want to highlight is that uh, Bitcoin maxis are incredibly inconsistent when it comes to the logic for the things they purportedly believe and hypocritical. Because, as it turns out, Satoshi Nakamoto has a ton of Bitcoin in contank markets. But what did they say about uh, Ripple holding the amount of XRP that they hold? Um, also, it looks like there's a, some, uh, some level of collusion between United States Senator Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler. There is a Senate uh, hearing in, I believe it was uh, September of 2021, and a testimony was given by attorney Gary Gensler uh, to questions. It turns out uh, he had beforehand, kid you not, and this has been on earth thanks to, um, I believe it's a not-for-profit entity that ended up doing, uh, 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 requesting rather, uh, some documents, uh, FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests. And uh, I'll share with you what attorney Hogan as well as attorney Deaton had to say about this. And then there's this headline from Coindesk. Department of Justice claims Sam Bankman-Fried tried to influence witness testimony, asks for communications, man. Now, folks, I do not have a legal background of any kind, but um, that sounds illegal to me. <laughs> what do you think? Cucumber loving son of a bitch is at it again. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so into the first topic, and I will note that there, are, there have been all sorts of people over the years speculating that actually David Schwartz himself, you know, of course, you know, co-creator of XRP and the XRP Ledger, Ripple CTO currently, uh, there's been all sorts of... Uh, speculation that perhaps David Schwartz, being the genius that he quite literally is, uh, he, David Schwartz is Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. And so here is an article as recently as October of this past year titled Ripple CTO David Schwartz Denies Being Satoshi Nakamoto. And this type of thing has been discussed for years. And one of the things that's cited in this article is David Schwartz uh, publicly stating that he actually didn't even know about Bitcoin until 2011, but still, who might Satoshi Nakamoto be? Well, here's the headline again from you today. Ripple CTO hints at Satoshi Nakamoto's identity and reason for enormous wealth untouched. And rather than read the article, I'm just going to go to the source of what uh, prompted the article to be written so we can discuss it. It's this Twitter thread that's on your screen. There's an XRP community member named uh, Stefan Huber who just yesterday wrote the following. What I will never understand, the 100% certainty that Satoshi Nakamoto is gone, the probability that he simply gave up his alter ego and holds much more in other wallets isn't low, isn't it? And if it was a group, then the probability is even greater. So pause to think about that. Like all sorts of people speculate that uh, the reason we haven't seen any of Satoshi's Bitcoin move, and again, it's it's over one, uh, 1 million Bitcoin out of a total supply ultimately once it's all mined of 21 million. That's, you know, that's, he has over 5% of the supply. Well, if there's, there's speculation, that's because Satoshi Nakamoto's dead. But what if Satoshi Nakamoto's a bunch of people? Doesn't that increase the odds? That's what Stefan Huber's getting at here, and it's a perfectly good point to make. What if it's a bunch of people? Well, David Schwartz responded to that and said, A group of people just decided to forget about a claim worth tens of billions of dollars? Look, although technically possible... It's kind of hard to believe. And so I understand, like, the more time passes, the more confident people are that, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's never going to move. Well, maybe it never does, but I'm not as confident as the people that think that. And in fact, if anything, um, you know, the longer this goes on, the more people are brought into the world of crypto and Bitcoin that are potentially at risk of this happening. Now, for me, I understood this risk back in 2017. And so I decided I'm going to buy Bitcoin and hold it anyway. And then I understood how much uh, XRP Ripple had. And I said, you know what? I'm going to buy XRP and hold it anyway. And if, if bad stuff happens, bad stuff happens. But, you know, once once the Bitcoin or XRP is dumped anyway, it's just like, okay, well, it's done then. Um, and now a, a Ripple employee, another Ripple employee, Neil Hartner, jumped in and responded to David Schwartz and said, 
Maybe they lost the keys and decided to let the mystique live on, rather than admit even the smartest people can lose seed phrases. To which David Schwartz responded, that makes sense. It could also have been a group of people, and some of them have died, leaving the remainder unable to access the keys. And so, you know, that's something that's possible too. But if you're part of the group that is Satoshi Nakamoto, assuming it's a collective, which seems more probable than just one single individual, I suspect anyway, uh, you're just going to be like, uh, yeah, you keep the keys. I'm not going to worry about it. Really? Is it why? Just because it started at zero dollars? I mean, I guess it's possible where people, I mean, they back then not so confident that, you know, Bitcoin would be as world changing as it certainly has been to this point, you know, creating an entirely new asset class. I guess it's possible here, but I'm just saying, like, the idea of that Bitcoin never moving, I mean, I get, fine, maybe it doesn't ever, but are we sure? I mean, look, people have been talking about this forever. Like, look at this article from October 31st of 2017. This is about a week and a half before I, I uh, jumped into crypto myself. So again, from 2017, what if Satoshi Nakamoto sold all his Bitcoin today? It's an article from Cointelegraph, and I'm going to cover just a small part of it. Uh, Matt Green, a cryptocurrency professor at Johns Hopkins University, says Nakamoto has the power to tank the currency if he wants to. Bitcoin has a finite supply of 21 million, which is expected to be reached by the year 2140. Nakamoto's 1 million Bitcoin amounts to 5% of the entire cryptocurrency. And I'll, by the way, I'll note, I saw um, another article where it's actually closer to 1.1 million. But anyway, uh, Matt Green said, quote, the thing about Bitcoin is if you control a million of them, you have the ability to flood the market at any point. Think of them as rare baseball cards. They're valuable because they're rare. If somebody could dump hundreds of thousands of Mickey Mantle trading cards, rare ones, onto the market, they wouldn't be worth so much anymore. End quote. Exactly. And so this is where I would get to the point that I, I mentioned at the outset of the video. The hypocritical and uh, you know completely ridiculous bitcoin maxis out there you say uh, you know, xrp my god it's 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 obviously centralized because ripple holds a bunch of it uh, never mind that it's not proof of stake so that makes no damn sense from a technical perspective you know just like with bitcoin the amount of uh, you know bitcoin held has nothing to do with having special permissions over the blockchain same with xrp so it's a nonsense argument but if you're purely talking about you know, power to dump on the market, fine. So Ripple's got a little bit less than half of total XRP, and you're talking about Satoshi Nakamoto with 5%. Well, 5% versus close to 50%. Okay, fine. Big, big difference. But I'm telling you, even with 5%, if that all hits the market, the price plummets. It will send people into terror, and they will panic sell, and they will financially wreck themselves. The risk is just as real with Bitcoin as it is with XRP. When you're talking about holding 5%, that is so much that if all hits the market at once, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's it, might as well, it might as well be almost, it doesn't matter at that point. Because mind you, it's you say 5%, you might think, oh, it's just 5%, it's only 5% increase. Well, no, 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 that's not quite how this works. First of all, not quite all Bitcoin has been mined, but also not all of it is available for sale. In fact, most Bitcoin is not available for sale. Last I checked, and admittedly it's probably been like a year and a half, but they were like at any given moment maybe, I can't remember if it was like a few million Bitcoin for sale. The rest of it's either lost or in cold storage, this or that, not on exchanges, whatever. So if you're talking about going from like, you know, 3 million Bitcoin being available for sale to 8 million Bitcoin being available for sale, you wreck the market. And so I just wanted to highlight this. It's just the idiocy nonsense from the Bitcoin match. It's like, well, but Ripple's got some sort of, okay, fine. Fine, so they got almost half, but I'm telling you, in terms of what's available in the market, it doesn't make a difference. And then don't forget also, Ripple does have, uh, you know, the, the vast amount of their XRP escrowed anyway, so there's that to consider. Uh, on to the next topic now. Uh, XRP community member Crypto Knight shared this. It was a video clip, uh, and it was this was on Fox News, by the way, and wrote, these people need to answer for the blatant corruption. And so this is actual evidence, and this is not a... Maybe the person did this thing. No, this, this happened. United States Senator Elizabeth Warren, uh, her, she sent, or people on her behalf sent, to Gary Gensler's office uh, the questions that would be asked at a Senate hearings, and I believe it was, again, September of 2021. And, and so not only were the questions sent, but recommended answers to the questions were also sent to Gary Gensler. I kid you not. It's a big, what a song and dance, folks. It's, it's a show. 
And, and look at, there are a couple of quotes on your screen right here. I'll read those to you. And so this is, again, from Elizabeth Warren or, or, or her office. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's, if it's on her behalf, it's, it doesn't, it's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. You're splitting hairs that book. But anyway, quote, let me know if you're okay with the questions as currently written, end quote. That's right. You don't like the questions. If they're a little bit too tough, let me know. I will change them. In fact, here's another quote from Elizabeth Warren or somebody from her office, regardless. Let me know if it's looking like the chair has any issues with the framing of the questions. Definitely don't want to put them in a tough spot, end quote. Oh, yeah, poor little Kim jong Un. You don't want to put them in a tough spot. My, isn't this gross and disgusting? And so I looked up the actual definition of the word collusion on Merriam-Webster here. And the definition is as follows. Secret agreement or cooperation, especially for an illegal or deceitful purpose. Well, I'll tell you this, at a minimum, that sure as hell is deceitful. That is a secret agreement that they didn't intend to get out. They didn't know that a Freedom of Information Act request would be satisfied and that it would end up being blasted out on Fox News. But it was. And so attorney Jeremy Hogan, he was tagged in a question by XR Plummer. XR Plummer on Twitter wrote, hey, XRP lawyers, does Senator Warren emailing Gary Gensler the questions she would ask before a Senate hearing violate any ethics rules? And uh, Jeremy Hogan did respond. Attorney Hogan says, it's not illegal that I know of, but definitely unethical since her job is to provide oversight of the SEC and that obviously conflicts with her feeding questions and answers to the head of the agency she is supposed to be keeping an eye on. This is completely outrageous. Everything that Gary Gensler touches is just bad. It's completely... And, and obviously, Senator Warren is awful. I don't know why she exists, to be, frankly, uh, to be frank with you. I, I, I don't know like how it came to be that nature accidentally made that thing. Like, I, I, I don't get it. I mean, surely it was some sort of mistake. Because that, 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 son, that ain't right. That, that just ain't right. And you know, I'll tell you another thing that's amazing, too. I've not seen, maybe, maybe it'll come out, or maybe I missed it, I guess. But I, I tried a number of different Google searches. I found zero stories of this. Zero um, from, uh, from any other mainstream media outlets. And zero in crypto media. Zero. Now, again, I admit it's possible that I could have just missed it. Maybe I'm like really not as good at the Weber Nets as I think that I am. But, but still, I'm just typing in a few key words like Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler, SEC, being given questions, stuff like that. You'd think that that would yield results. You would think that it would. So if, if that wasn't going to, okay, fine. But it, nobody's talking about this. <laughs> it's just amazing. Here's what Attorney Deaton had to say. He wrote, in other words, Elizabeth Warren has dishonored her oath and her office. And so she's basically, she would love to see crypto destroyed. As, you know, SEC uh, Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Un would love to see it completely destroyed, completely decimated. So they're working in tandem. I'm just glad that there are people on the other side of this that are um, very pro-crypto. There are a lot of others out there that are actually pro-crypto. Um, and then there's this from Coindesk. Department of Justice claims Sam Bankman-Fried tried to influence witness testimony Asks for communications ban. And by the way, I'll just share with you now. In reference to this, Attorney John Deaton wrote the following. I found this to be, well, reasonable and also pretty damn funny. He wrote, this guy, SB Fraud, is every defense counsel's nightmare. And then he actually tagged SBF here on Twitter. And then John Deaton wrote, hey, SBF, let me give you some valuable free legal advice that I guarantee your lawyers won't object to. STFU, which of course stands for shut the, yeah, you got the rest. <laughs> that sounds about... And that was free. He didn't even charge SBF for that. I just amazed SB... the, the stuff that he's doing, all this stuff that he's done pre-trial. I just, I don't know how he could possibly think uh, that this is somehow going to actually help. And I understand it. It seems pretty clear that the approach that he's going for is not that nothing went wrong, but that there was no intent to defraud or, or investors or steal from investors. It's just, we did an oops -a doodles uh, he, So he's trying to get away with that narrative, which I, I don't know how that flies anyway. But him coming out and saying all this stuff regardless, even if that's the narrative you want to go with, I don't see how saying all of these things, sometimes, uh, you know, con conflicting words from Sam Bankman-Fried in recent months, I, I don't see how any of that actually helps him here. 
But anyway, let's jump into this piece from Coindesk here. I want to share with you part of this so you can, get, you can cut to the chase here. But federal prosecutors wrote a letter to U.S. District Court Judge Lewis Kaplan on Friday requesting that he modify the conditions of Sam Bankman Freed's bail to include ban on private communications with current and former employees of FTX and Alameda Research. The Department of Justice's request comes after Bankman Freed reached out to at least one FTX employee identified as Ryan Miller the current general counsel for FTX US to allegedly attempt to influence his future witness testimony. Quote, I would, and this is from SBF here, I would really love to reconnect and see if there's a way for us to have a constructive relationship, use each other as resources when possible, or at least vet things with each other. End quote. That's, that's, that, that's quoted by the Department of Justice. Uh, how can you be this stupid? Oh my God. You, you little butt nugget with a fro. Like, what, how could he think that reaching out to somebody who is like a witness, uh, undoubtedly, I'm all, maybe not undoubtedly, but uh, you know, pretty reasonable suspect this individual going to be speaking out against Sam Bankman Freed, and you think that pre trial it's a good idea to reach out to him? You sure about that, Sam Bankman Freed? This is a completely ridiculous story, and I can't wait to see the movie. I believe there's going to be multiple movies on this. I'm sure by the time it's all said and done. This is completely absurd. I just hope when the movie's made that they don't leave out the cucumbers, because, I mean, that's a big part of who Sam Bankman Freed is. He's a cucumber-loving son of a bitch. All up in this bitch. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, all right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>